All right, in this video, we are going to look at goal M.1.9 in the ATIT study manual, and this involves ratios and rates of change. We have one, two, three, four, five examples to look at, and before we jump into that, let me show you something real quick. Uh, recently, we have, or I have, started teaching a test prep, uh, tease test class. So over here at the website, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but what you can find now are one little new section, the note from tease review sessions. And there was one that I had last Friday. There will be another one this Friday. And we're covering the ATIT study manual in that class as well. So feel free to go get those notes. You can just click on that right there. And, you know, this is stuff that was covered in that class, which is going to be very similar to the stuff that you've seen in these videos so far. So just another resource there, too. And also one more thing to talk about as well, since we're talking about ratios and rates in this video. If you go over to DMA over at my website and go to DMA material and DMA 30 material, DMA 30 is a developmental math course that covers ratios and rates and stuff like that so if you feel like you need some extra practice feel free to come over here to this site plenty of notes and a couple of videos there as well but anyway back to the tutorial so we got ratios and rates well what is a ratio a ratio is really just a comparison of two numbers typically written as a fraction or you can have it written uh, with a little colon in between it but two to three two thirds however you want to read that that's a ratio now, what is a rate? A rate is like a ratio, except we compare two different units of measurement. For example, if I say 60 over 1, we can say 60 miles per 1 hour. Now, we commonly write that as just 60 mph. But that is a rate. A rate compares two numbers and it uses different units of measurement. So miles is a measure of distance, hour is a measure of time, so 60 miles per hour is a rate. Uh, another example of a rate is thinking about, you know, you okay, you get in your car, you travel at a speed of 60 miles per hour to get to work, and suppose your part-time job, you get paid $15 per hour. That is a rate. That's the hourly rate that you get paid at. So it's still like a comparison of two numbers. It is like a ratio, except the big difference is a rate has two different units of measurement. Up here we have dollars, and then down here we have time. So I hope that makes sense there. Now let's look at an example that involves a ratio. There are 50 members of a country club at the yearly budget meeting. 21 of those members present, I can't type, 21 of those members present are females. What is the ratio of males to females at the meeting? So we want a ratio of males to females. This is where you're going to have to be careful. So males to females. You have to be careful how, with how this is worded. If it was females to males, we'd want to reverse this. But since it says males to females, we're going to set up this ratio like that. Well, how many males do we have? Since there are 50 members, let me get the calculator up. Since there's 50 members at the meeting and 21 of them are females, if we just take 50 minus 21, that's going to give us 29. So 29 males to the number of females, well, we know there's 21 females. So that ratio is 29 to 21. Let me go ahead and give you another example, though, from this same problem. Suppose we wanted to find what is the ratio of females to the total number of people at the meeting. So what's the ratio of females to the total number of people at the meeting? Well, we know that there are, what do we say for females? 21 females to the total number of people at the meeting. So that would be 21 to 50. Notice uh, we're finding two different ratios. This ratio here was males to females. This one is females to the total number of people at the meeting. So, you know, two different examples that uh, revolve around the same question. So make sure you read that sentence carefully when you're trying to find a ratio on the T's test. Now, this next example, Susanna paid $13.45 for five pounds of Honeycrisp apples. What is the unit cost? Well, what is unit cost? Unit cost is going to be cost per one unit. One unit. In this case, it's going to be 
per one pound. When you go shopping at Food Line, Walmart, or wherever, and you're buying vegetables, you always see that price. That price they give you is the price per pound, at least in America. Um, you know, some other places it might be cost per kilogram or something like that. But nonetheless, cost per pound. Well, this right here is the cost she paid for five pounds. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a rate. 13.45, that's the cost for five pounds. And when you set it up like this, you may be thinking, okay, well, how can I figure this out? All we need to do here is divide. Take the 13.45 and divide it by five. And I'm sure you were thinking about that anyway. So we get a, a unit cost of $2.69 per pound. Some expensive apples, but they are Honeycrisp. Some good stuff right there. But uh, anyway, so when you got this total cost per five pounds, that is not a unit cost. The unit cost is going to be the cost per one unit, in this case, the cost per one pound. Uh, just like when you go buy gas, you know, when you fill up your car with gas, you, you may put $30 worth of gas into your car, but you know, when you pull into that gas station, you see that $2.19 per gallon. That's the unit cost per gallon for gasoline in that case. So that's what unit cost means, cost per one unit. What about this next example here? John drove 348 miles in six hours. What was his average rate of change? Basically, in, in this problem, the rate of change, what's the average rate of change? We can say, hey, what was his average speed? Well, we take the distance, 348 miles. I'm going to write it as a rate divided by six hours. So really what we're doing here is we're kind of finding, I mean, the word unit, the unit rate is really what we're doing here. Uh, we're finding his average speed. So if we take the 348, that's the total distance, divide by how long it took him to get there, or how long it took him to drive that distance, we get a number, 58. What's that 58 represent? 58 miles per hour. This was his average speed. Now, sure, he's stopping sometimes. And, you know, when he's driving through cities or maybe sometimes he's out on the interstate and he's going like 70. But his average speed, if he traveled 348 miles in six hours, this was his average rate of change, his average speed. I hope that makes sense. Now, uh, on to the last one here. I think that's the last one. Yeah. So this last one here, we got another rate problem going on, sort of. Alexa's current cell phone plan allows her to use 10 gigabytes of data per month plus unlimited minutes of messaging for a monthly price of $92. We will assume this is including tax and the extra fees associated with the account. So basically, let's just not try to figure out sales tax or anything in this problem. Let's just assume, you know, unlimited minutes, unlimited messaging, 10 gigs of data, 92 bucks. There is a charge of $8 per gigabyte if she exceeds her data limit. Alexa's monthly bill was $124 this past month. How many gigabytes of data did Alexa use last month? Okay, well, did she exceed her uh, data limit? Absolutely, because this right here, this $92, is how much she pays for 10 gigs of data, uh, unlimited minutes, unlimited messaging. And now her bill is $124. So the best approach here is to take that $124. That was the bill that she got. Subtract what it should have been had she not gone over. So $32 is what she paid extra. And all I did there was take the $124 minus the $92. That gives us $32. So this is how much money she went over. $32 over her normal, normal bill. Well, assuming, like I said, we're not going to throw in any taxes or extra fees or anything like that. Let's just assume this $32 is all about her exceeding her data. Well, $32, if we divide it by 8, because for every gig that she goes over, she's going to pay 8 bucks. Well, if we take 32 divided by 8, that means she went over by 4 gigabytes. Is this the answer to our question? The answer is no. Because the question did not ask, how much did she go over? The question says, how many gigabytes of data did Alexa use last month? She didn't use 4 gigs. Remember, she gets 10 gigs as part of her plan. She went over by 4 gigs, so therefore her total amount will be she used 14 gigabytes of data last month. So make sure you read these questions very, very carefully. You know, back here at the beginning when we talked about the ratio of males to females, and in this case, females to the total number of people, uh, making sure we understand unit rates, in this case, a unit cost. 
Um, and this last example here too, just making sure you read that question very carefully because if the question did say, how many gigabytes did Alexa go over? She went over four gigabytes, but the question did say, how many gigabytes did she use? So that's the 10 plus the four. And there you have it, that's uh, what, five examples that cover ratios and rates. And again, just in case you skip part of the video, make sure you go check out DMA30 over at my website for more notes and videos that involve rates and ratios. And then also um, kind of recapping everything back here at Test Prep, ATI, T's new, you will be seeing some notes from the T's review sessions that I'll be teaching through the month of February, 2017. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.